All right, gentlemen, so how not to wear a polo with jeans? Example number one. And sticking with this theme, example number two. And just to further drive home the point, example number three. So at this point, some of you guys are thinking, Antonio, give me examples of what does work. How do you make a polo shirt with jeans look amazing? All right, well, here are some examples right here. As you can see with this combination, the colors and the fit all work together. And this combination right here, timeless and elegant. And this last combination, casual yet sophisticated. All right, so you've got the visuals, but now how to pull off the look. Now, before we lay out the rules on how to wear a polo with jeans and look amazing, let's first define what a polo shirt is. Now, polo shirts, also called tennis shirts, golf shirts, these are a type of shirt with a collar. Now that sounds very similar to a dress shirt, but there's a big difference. Usually polo shirts are made from a knitted fabric, not a woven fabric. Now, originally what is called a peak knit was used, and this is an early way of performance enhancing the fabric. Basically, you could use cotton and with a peak knit, you're going to be able to more easily wick away moisture from the bottom. Now, the first polo shirts were made by the British over in India in about 1859. That being said, it remained a relatively obscure type of shirt, and it wasn't until the mid-1920s that a French tennis player, René Lacoste, started to make the polo shirt popular. This tennis shirt that René cost design was actually something that could perform on the field. And what's funny is because of the collar, most people consider polo shirts to be a bit of a dressier shirt. But at the time, this was a very casual shirt. Now, I bring up that part about polo shirts and the confusion as to where they fit in the dress code because a lot of people see a dress shirt and they see a polo shirt and they think, oh, it's the same thing, right? Not true. Technically, a polo shirt is going to be at a lower level than a dress shirt in levels of formality. So, polo shirts are going to be more casual. And the big reason is going to be their soft collar. Personally, I've always found that a bit frustrating because I like to be able to layer clothing. I always wanted to wear my polo shirts with my sports jackets. And that's why, gentlemen, I'm happy to bring you today's sponsor, Collars & Co., because they've created a polo shirt that pretty much acts and works like a dress shirt. Now, the key with Collars & Co. is going to be the strong front placket that gives it a dressier look and then a strong collar that stays up and doesn't look like a piece of shriveled bacon. Seriously, you know what I'm talking about. That polo you've ran through the wash just a couple times and all of a sudden that collar, it looks bad. Now, over at Collars & Co., you're going to find a variety of different types of collars. You've got the English spread collar, the Oxford button-down collar, and the amazing cutaway collar. That being said, the semi-spread collar is perhaps the most versatile and one of my favorites. And gents, when you go over to their website, what you're going to see is they've got all the traditional collars. If you're going to grab your first Collars & Co. today, I recommend just going with a color that is already rotating in your wardrobe. So, for the majority of us, it's going to be white. Maybe it's going to be pink for you, maybe a light blue, maybe a true blue. Maybe you're a dad like me and you want to go with a navy because it hides stains. And let's not forget to talk about the fabric. They've got a four-way stretch and it's made to wick away moisture from the bottom. The fabric is incredibly lightweight, it's soft, and if you travel a lot, you can pack this in your suitcase and pull it out and there are going to be no wrinkles. They were on Shark Tank. If you look at Mark Cuban, he's been spotted wearing these shirts. Shirts. In fact, he invested a million dollars into this company because he believed what they were about. And so do I. They make it easier to look good. Seriously, gents, here I am dressed up for my daughter's baptism. Look at the shirt I'm wearing, Collars & Co. I love these shirts. They rotate through my wardrobe. Highly recommended. And if you haven't been over to their website for a while, go check them out. They've got some new arrivals, some new looks, and you want to get the best deal on the web. Gentlemen, down in the description of today's video, I've got a deal for you. Use that link, go over to Collars & Co. and grab yourself a shirt with a dress collar polo. Awesome company, proud to support them. Now, the first rule in wearing a polo shirt with jeans is to select the right type of denim. Now, the four main types of denim you're going to see out there is going to be raw denim, selvage denim, washed denim, and distressed denim. Now, nothing against distressed denim, but I'm going to say for the majority of you guys, this is not going to be a look you're going to want to pull off. Now, I know some of you guys are a bit more fashion forward and you think you can pull off the look, go for it. But in the majority of situations, you guys are going to be wearing a solid colored polo and you're going to be dressing it up just a tad. So, you're going to want to go with jeans because they are casual in nature. You're going to want to go with a dressier looking pair of jeans. Now, does that mean you're going to go with raw denim? 
Probably not. And the reason being is raw denim is really stiff, very heavy, and it may look out of place with that light casual polo. Now, selvage denim, on the other hand, and I know I'm making big generalizations. I'm assuming that the selvage denim is lighter weight than the raw denim. This is something I do think in certain situations you can pull it off, but you got to be careful. Again, you'd want to make sure the denim isn't too stiff or too heavy. Although, if you do get a great fit, that little bit of stiffness, the heavier weight gives the denim a little bit of a dressier feel. That being said, for the majority of situations, you're going to want to go with a classic washed denim, preferably in a dark indigo blue, although you can bring in black, you can bring in a dark gray. I've seen guys actually bring in a dark maroon, a red, and actually work with a solid polo. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, if you want to see more like this on the channel, do me a favor and smash the like button. I appreciate it when you guys interact with the videos and it lets the YouTube gods know that, hey, this video is worth watching. The next rule is to pay attention to the fit of the denim. You want to make sure, again, you're not going to extremes. So, that overly loose, that baggy denim, you're going to want to avoid anything that is skinny too close to the skin. Again, you want to avoid this. Even a loose straight leg, I think, can be a little bit too casual. You want to avoid the boot cut. It's going to be too loose at the bottom. Instead, go for a closer straight fit or maybe a slim cut. Definitely, I think it looks best when you've got a tapered modern cut. The next rule is to know your different types of polos and what's going to work in what situation. So, let's talk about some of the more rare ones. You're going to see some striped polos out there. These actually look like they belong on the polo field. And yes, I know I skipped this in the history. The polo fields actually didn't make the polo shirt popular. It was actually Ralph Lauren who took it from the polo fields and started selling it to the masses. In any case, he did understand that, hey, you can bring in these patterns and people will wear them. Do I think they look good with jeans? I think you can pull it off. It's a little bit more of a fashionable look that is out of style right now, so you want to be careful with that. That being said, it is something that if you really like the pattern, then go for it. But if you're just bringing polos into your wardrobe, you want something that's going to work easy with jeans, look to the classic solid colored polo. And you're going to find polos in a wide variety of colors, but I really like sticking with the classic colors of white, of dark blue, pink, and other variations of blue look good as well. Now, when it comes to that front placket, you're going to see anywhere from zero to up to four buttons usually in the front. And there isn't a hard and fast rule on this, but usually the more buttons you see, the dressier the polo is going to be. Now, what about long sleeve polos? The vast majority of polos you're going to see out there are going to be short sleeve. It originated in a hot weather environment so that it could be worn on the polo field. But long sleeve polos, I think that they have a place because if you look at where the polo shirt originally came from, it's the Henley. And we do see long sleeve Henleys. They're great because I think they add a bit of warmth. You're going to see polos out there that are going to be heavier knit and weave and basically using a thicker fabric. Fabric. I think the key to remember here is that polos by their nature are always more casual than dress shirts. And if you're going to wear a long sleeve polo, it's not at the same level as a dress shirt. So, don't try to wear it in a situation where you need to wear a dress shirt. That being said, if you get a good fit on it, which is the shoulder points, it's not overly long, it's not overly loose, then go for it. I think it can look great. I see a lot of guys though still messing this up because they're wearing a polo shirt that is way too large. Next up, let's talk about performance fabrics. The polo I'm wearing right now, Collars & Co., is made from a performance fabric. And I know a lot of guys are hesitant about this. Maybe 30, 40 years ago, I would have agreed with you, but now they've made such advancements in the materials, in the wicking ability, the breathability, the comfort. I even think they look really dressy. I've worn these with casual suits. So, I do think that nowadays, that's not something you need to pay attention to as much. Just make sure it's coming from a reputable brand that you like the look of it, that if they're going to use a synthetic material, they're explaining why. And if it's a performance fabric, we see this also in the golf industry. We see this in places where an athlete athlete is wearing this, he's going to be sweating and it actually performs even better than cotton. And speaking of materials, what about when you see a polo shirt made from cashmere, made from silk, made from a luxury material? All I'm going to say here is sometimes that's just a marketing ploy. I mean, silk actually is not the most comfortable thing to wear. Anyone ever worn a silk shirt can tell you, you can sweat and it, it is very difficult to get clean. So, I wouldn't want a shirt like that. That being said, I do see where certain weaves give a very luxurious look and you see a lot of high-end manufacturers making polos that can cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and, yeah, are made to actually go with dress slacks for, you know, a more sophisticated look. If you've got those, if you find something, you know, go for it if you really like the look. Next up, gents, let's talk about fit. 
And fit matters in this combination more than in a lot of other areas. Because when you're wearing jackets, you're wearing layered clothing, you can cover up maybe some fit issues, especially clothing on the lower levels of the layering. But when you're just wearing the polo with jeans, it's something that for a lot of us, we really like to make sure we get a great fit on our jeans. We've got particular brands that we go for. You got to do the same thing with your polo. You've got to make sure that this fits your body. And it's not going to work for every body type. Some body types, they just simply look better with a jacket on top. Yeah, if you've got a little bit of weight around the midsection, you've got the shape of a pair. In that case, you're going to want to build up the shoulders. You're going to want to layer with a polo, not necessarily wear a polo with jean combination because that's not going to complement your build. That being said, if you're short and stout, if you are tall and skinny, you can still pull off this combination, but you've got to get the right fit. First up, again, you've got to make sure those jeans fit you well, hem them if necessary. You don't want them too long there, but make sure that polo fits you well. You don't want it looking too tight in the midsection like you're a stuffed sausage. You also don't want it too loose in the shoulders where it looks like it's going down your arms. So, am I recommended you get the polo and possibly jeans adjusted by the tailor? You bet I am. In fact, know the name of your tailor. It takes an average look and can make it amazing. Especially again, you maybe don't have the largest arms, then get the sleeves adjusted so that that polo fits a little bit closer there. The next rule with this combination is don't try to overdo it. Again, sometimes you're going to find polos out there that are using a loud color or drawing attention themselves. If you're going to wear that polo, understand everything else in the outfit should be muted, especially the denim. That being said, if you're wearing a colored denim or you're wearing distressed denim, you're really going to try to pull this look off, then this is when you need to keep the polo muted in a simple, clean color. And speaking of colors, I want to go a little bit deeper here and talk about monochromatic looks versus complementary color combinations. So, with a monochromatic look, that's when your top and bottom are relatively the same color. What's nice about this is it allows the eyes to go up and down. I usually try to go for this look, I know, with wearing a navy polo with dark indigo denim. For me, as a father of five that just simply wants a practical go-to daily uniform outfit, I find that this combination just works. But I get it. This can be boring. So, again, if you're going to bring in a brighter color up in the polo, then try to keep the trousers, try to keep those jeans relatively neutral. That being said, you don't have to keep everything in that indigo color. You can definitely bring in a variety of grays. You can bring in a black. I've seen so many different colors of jeans that can work with actually even colored polos, assuming again, it's a more neutral top. Maybe you're having a little bit of brighter color, a little bit more of color with the jeans, or maybe you're bringing together pastels. Even lighter color combinations in tans and browns can work. Perhaps the biggest tip I can give you here is go out there and look for inspiration. Look at color combinations you like. Go through magazines magazines, go through Pinterest, go over on Instagram, save those onto your desktop. Nothing wrong with that and try to repeat those same combinations. And even if the styles don't exactly match up, it was more of a t-shirt and jean combination, but you just love that color combination, go ahead and try it. Experiment in the polo and see what you can do. Now, what about the rules on tucking versus untucking? Now, if you're going to be wearing dress slacks with a polo, with a casual suit, I can see tucking it in, even if it is a straight hem, if it's long enough. But in general, straight hem shirts like polos are not meant to be tucked in. So, with jeans, a more casual combination, I would say in the majority of situations, it's okay to leave the polo shirt untucked. That being said, it needs to be the right length. So, how to know if your shirt's the right length? Okay. So, once you have it on, raise your arms up. If you expose any of your midsection, that polo shirt is a little bit too short. But, after raising your arms, if you still have two inches of material that's covering your trousers, that polo shirt is probably too long. The perfect length of a shirt is when you raise your arms up and it's just at the top of the trousers, maybe a half inch to an inch beyond. That being said, if you've got a favorite polo shirt and it's too long, you actually can get this adjusted by a seamstress or a tailor for a nominal amount. In fact, you could do it yourself if you look up a tutorial. Now, what about shoes? Of course, you can wear sneakers, you can wear boots, and you can wear dress shoes. Yes, I said dress shoes with jeans. You want to know how to be able to pull off that look? Guys, check out this video right here, how to wear jeans with dress shoes. You're going to enjoy it. It's a solid video. Boom. Click on it and check it out right here.